Hey everybody, Joe Menza here. I thought I'd do a little watercolor painting today and I was going to do maybe something with a little path with some house or houses. Sometimes I say what I'm going to do in the beginning and then I call an audible because I make this up as I go along. So let's see what happens here. But that's sort of the plan. Sometimes the sky changes some. I'm like, oh, you know what? This would look good for this other kind of scene. And like mid stride, I'll change it. So I don't really have like always a definite plan. I, sometimes I know what I'd like, like the paint. So we're going to put on our clean water here. And I always put on my three coats. Let the water run down the page. You can mop it up a little if you want to. That's fine. We're going to get a palette with the usual colors. Payne's Gray, Lizard Crimson, Raw Sienna, Burnt Umber, Light Red, Ultramarine Blue, and Cad Yellow. And then I also keep a little Van Dyke Brown. Uh, I keep a little uh, Burnt Sienna. So in case I need some other little colors, I might throw those in there, okay? First thing, we're going to do a sky. And it's up to you what kind of sky you want to do. If you want to make a dirty sky or clean, bright, summer day sky. It's up to you. I always like to leave a little light shining through from somewhere. Um, it just brings the eye into focus of, of a lit area. The light and playing with the light in the dark is something I really like to do. Let's put this in where the ground area is going to be. There's not going to really be any shadows or anything or any uh, water for reflections or anything here. So just tap in a little I'm going to have the light kind of coming down where I think that house is going to be. Let's get a little ultramarine blue and a little light red. A little more ultramarine blue. Okay. If you put it on too heavy and it starts running down and that's not what you want, you can sort of do a little cleanup, mopping up. I'm trying to get a little warmth in the sky. That's why I've been adding a little bit more of the light red. Clouds smaller near the bottom because that's how they are to make it look like it kind of goes back. In the bottom here we're going to have a little bit of land and I just just to have the sky colors up in here just just so they're there. Just cleaning up some of this so it doesn't look like it's all stormy out. Okay, so that's the basis for our scene. Little drying time, not a whole lot, but this is ultimately the basis of our watercolor scene. This is sort of like the foundation. This is the staining of the paper for the background before we lay in the rest of the elements. Across the bottom, mop up any excess moisture. People have asked me, why do you paint like all the way to the edge? Why don't you put tape around? Why don't you put tape around your paper? Because I find that I can do this with a 16 by 20 mat that's readily available. So I go edge to edge. Plus, I don't want to mess around with tape. I mean, it's just one more thing you have to mess around with. So, it's one less thing you have to mess around with with doing it this way. So, <clears throat> okay. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna have some houses here. We're gonna have some sort of trees here in the background. Um, up to you what colors you wanna use do you want. You know, is this gonna be sort of a green, uh, you know, green, but you have blue and red in the sky. So if you wanna kinda keep it similar to that, um, you can kinda go with browns. It's all about how you match up colors really. So mine, I'm going to have a little bit of red in there, almost a little bit to the brownish side. You can lay in a few little yellows and greens. You don't need a lot of green to catch really the eye. Sometimes just a, a little hint of something or if you like want red in a painting you don't need to go crazy. You can just put like you just want to have like some little like that, like little bushes in there. There's, that's a lot of red, really. So over here, I'm going to do a little bit more with brown, where I'm going to have these houses. And then a little bit of red in here. A 
and just to kind of vary it up a little bit. So we have our little bush line going here. And then the next thing we're going to have a little bit more foreground, maybe some trees. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is, and hopefully, let's dry this just for a quick New York second and get our scratching out card. So I'm going to put a little house here and I'm going to try to scratch it in. I, I like lifting out houses more than scratching in, but let's just go ahead and scratch in just for... I like lifting more than I like scratching. That's not too bad. We'll put like a little shed of some kind back in here. Now you just scrape in a few things. It doesn't really matter exactly what they are. From a distance, you'll be able to see them. I'll take a little bit more brown. Oops. Kind of. Like a little level area there. Okay, so the next thing we want, want to do, a little bit of foreground here. I'm going to just do some quick sweeps and get some stuff laid in here. Foreground's always kind of tricky because if you do too much with the colors, it looks too overworked. So sometimes just popping in swiping in some quick things looks more natural looks more spontaneous than anything um you know something else you can do too here is um this guy had a little bit of a lake in front of his house or some water or something here just uh doesn't work go, go over it again just a little hint of some kind of water here clean it up a little bit So a little bit of water. There's still going to be a path coming out here. I want a little, little bit of a path just to just to lay the framework for that path there. It's still a little too wet, but I, I, want, I do want to have a path coming out of there. Okay, let's put in a little bit more. Some bushes, some hints of some bushes. Some grass leading up to where this little bit of water is here. Same thing over here, a little bit of this. We're gonna come back to that path a little bit more there. I like a little bit of light hitting that. Kinda of looks kinda of interesting. Let's go ahead and do a little quick drying. You can see this pretty good here. <laughs> pretty wet right now so drying the paper is not a bad idea A lot of moisture running across the bottom when you mopped up. When I do scenes like this, I like to build up a little bit of layers so I can go from light to dark and kind of see where I'm at. And let's put a little bit of put a little bit of ground in through here. <clears throat> if there's too much water on your brush, always keep a little towel handy and you can just dab it off as you go. They're one of the most handiest things. A little bit of that going on there. And let's put a little tree. Let's put a little tree right in here. This one's not going to go to the top like sometimes I do them. A little bit. Let's flick the edge of that 
flick the edge of that hake brush. We'll come back and we'll do some more. Uh, let's see, I need my uh, rigger brush. Number three rigger. Always have plenty of water on the uh, on the brush because it runs out fast on this brush. It doesn't hold water like the hake brush. Uh, just flick out some flick out some branches. Don't drive yourself too crazy doing this. Especially because I'll probably put some branches on there anyways. Or branches. There's branches now. Leaves. Reminds me of Cousin Vinny. What's all over these bushes and trees? Leaves, that's right. Just shout it out when you know the answer. So there you go. There's a little tree right there. I may put another one on the other side. Oh, I did it again. Oops, I did it again. I left my hake in front of the view there. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to do a little bit more foreground work here. And again, I make these up as I go along, so... Kind of look at the scene and, and what's needed here. Add a little bit of brown under, underneath the tree. I do my usual and I take my card and I make the tree look like it's got some bark on it. Slide that down. And it gives the tree a little element of realism. Okay. There's that. Put a little bit down there. Use some of your still wet rigger brush to put a little flick a little. My brush is just so wet today. I don't know what's it's almost too much. And we'll come back to that. Let's get a little more green. A little, a little greenery in, on top here where it'll stand out a little bit. Don't forget our path here. I almost covered it up. Almost covered up the path. Not all the way here, but leading up to that. And just put a little bit more of the foliage in here, kind of in and around where the house is, I put a little bit. Leave that a little open, looks like a little, sort of a little bit of a puddle there. Again, my brush is really wet here. Okay, let's, again, building up on this foliage here. A little heavier in through here. Heavier and darker as we come closer to the bottom of the page. Build up a little bit around where this little bit of water is here. It's really just really just a little bit of a puddle there. A little bit more foliage. Up to around the houses. I like that little white thing. I don't know what that is there. I left a little spot out, but just to keep it sort of interesting. And again, you can you want to flick little little things with your with your card. Now is the time to do that. <clears throat> Take a little bit of brown. Insert a little bit of brown. Using Van Dyke brown so it stands out a little bit. Insert a little bit of brown in there just to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to take my uh, I'm going to take my uh, paper towel roll here, and I am going to just lift out a little bit because the path doesn't really look enough like a path in my opinion. So I'm going to take and I'm going to lift out a, a little more here. So it looks like a path, and then the path kind of goes off 
the screen there. So see, you got a little bit more of a path there. And I lost a little bit of my edge, so let's get some, some more bush work. Just encroaches on the road a little bit. Take a little bit of Payne's gray on the now getting dirty brush. Just put a little bit. If you can get her flat like that, I get flat edge. Put a little bit around the edge here just to so it looks like there's a defined edge around this little pond area. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to do is I just, for some balance sake, take a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little brown. Let's just put, I'm going to put a little, another little tree out, out this way. Nothing super huge. Just something to, to look at over here. There's just not enough, in my opinion. I'm not going to dip my brush in water. I'm going to let it sit there for a minute because I might want it to stay with the colors on there. Having the variety of colors on your brush is a key to a lot of this, as opposed to solid colors. If you want that Wesson look, then you go for solid, clean colors. Again, you got to have enough water on your brush when you're doing these branches. Otherwise, you'll be following back again, which you just did. This is a craggly old tree right here. Very craggly. Nice and craggly. I don't know what happened to the top of this, but <laughs> it was Bob Ross that said, if there's a tree out there you, you make, there's, there's probably a tree out there that looks like that. I kind of like this tree. Nice and craggly looking. And I'm take my card again. Just kind of give it some little dimension there. Some little scrapes to, for some grass popping up there. <clears throat> and take my old dirty brush here. Just dab in a little bit there. Dab in and a little bit in around here. Take my card again. Let's put in some just some little little stones over here. Put in some over here. Some little rocks around where this little pond area is. Just like that. Some little stray grass popping up from around the edge. Over here we'll put in some larger little rocks there, some grass. Give that sort of a realistic look effect. So the last thing is you're going to decide to want to put some, you don't have to put leaves on your tree. I like to. So I'm going to take my brush with some greenish yellow coloring that's already on there. And the lighter you do this, you can leave a lot more. You can leave a lot more sky color coming through. It's up to you how much leaf work you want to do. You could leave it like that. Leave a lot of your branches showing through. I think that looks kind of good. And I'll come over here and do a lot more over here. That's a cool looking tree. Get a little, maybe a little brown mixed in with that green, just to maybe a little bit of Payne's gray, just to or shadows down where the tree would have some shadows. Still not getting as dark as I'd like. All right, so we have our trees. Now, you look at something like this and you go, no, oh, there might be a little too too much green in there. I mean, it, there is, there's, there's a lot of dull muted colors in there. Take your cad yellow. 
get a lot of that cat yellow on the on the brush. Clean it first, and then you'll because you really it'll stand out. But get a lot of cad yellow on the on the brush. It's got to be cad yellow. Artist grades even better, but you can get some brighter yellows on there. See, I got uh, this is. Uh, Oh, I was going to show you this here. I can find it real quick. And it's not in my basket of stuff. There it is. So this is a Windsor & Newton Artist Grade Cadmium Yellow. It's really strong. So you can put a little bit. It's expensive too. You can put a little bit on your palette and Look at how strong that is. You put a lot of that on there. And then when you come in and you dab it in, you can, this is one of the few colors you can go over the top with. And you could kind of highlight your trees if you feel like you need a little bit more, more highlight color. And it just gives it a nice little vibrancy. And you can use this for grass or whatever. You can see how much it, it does for you there. You can even come back and add yeah, just a little bit of blue to it. Tuck it down a little bit. Well, just add some little little grasses in through here, and it matches with the trees. Don't overdo it. Okay, that's it. That's it for that. We don't want to overdo that. Come back with your rigor brush. Something dark color on there. We'll lay in a little, a little bit of a doorway to this house, or barn, or whatever you want to call it. Let's put a couple little windows here, maybe a little smokestack up here. No, that's not too bad. I've done worse houses. Sometimes I'd rather not have any houses in there at all. Just because they stand out like a sore thumb, but it's nice to have something to look at. I'm gonna put on a little bit more, a little bit more greenery, a little more shrub work in and around. That might be a little too artificially looking. Add a little bit of Payne's gray to it. Just enough to get a little bit more to the scene. <clears throat> and it looks like we almost have like a little path going in through there. It's kind of kind of a neat thing. And let's go ahead and break out the uh, micron pens. I use an 005 for this. Yeah, I'll put a couple little distant birds in there. Maybe a couple up here, flying around. And uh, sometimes I'll come in and I'll make little just hash marks, paint still wet on the bottom, just to give a little little details. If I think it needs it or whatever. Now I got a little bit of light coming down in through here to the house. Here, let me break it in for you. We'll get it up close there. Got a nice sky, nice little light coming down. We've got our little house over here. And the last thing I'm going to do as far as the detail goes is, is the house. I'm going to take, uh, take my flat brush here. It's a good size. And uh, <clears throat> put a little roof on, on the house. A little bit of light red. Maybe just a little bit of brown so it's not so stark looking. And we'll put... Just like that. And I'll put a little bit on this side just to it looks like the red continues coming down. And that's really it. Now something a little trick you can do is if you want the roof to look like it's got a little worn to it, just take your towel, 
and lift out a little bit. And you can actually make it look like it's got a little bit of a wear pattern to it. And then you can kind of come back over it and put a little bit of a some little line breaks in there so it has a little bit more of a realistic look to it. But see, look, we got our little path coming out. Some little interesting things to look at. We've got a little little water there. And the water we could take and uh, we can actually take our little flat brush and we can start putting in some little little streaks. We're lifting. We're lifting here. Just lifting it out a little bit of lifting out a little bit of uh, paint so that it looks like there's water back in here. Just a little bit of lifting. Take your paper towel, put that in there, and a little sweep across. And see, we've made it look a little bit more like water there. And another thing I do is I use this Jelly Roll pen. This is a, a white pen. And I'll put in little, little highlights of where water might be. And you could use this Jelly Roll pen for a lot of little things. A lot of little highlights at the end. And if you don't want to use white, that's fine. This is just like little highlights of things. Just to give it a little... You can use this on like, say you wanted a a little highlight on the door here, a little highlight on the chimney area. You can use this just for highlighting little little things. A little bit along this edge of this roof of this house. Just to give you a little bit more, just some highlights there. So this is what we have here. I don't know if you can see the water there. If you can see that. You can even take a little white gouache and streak it across too and make like little ripples in there too. But you don't have to do that. You don't want to. So that's pretty much it for that one. Lastly, to sign it. And for that I use just a regular 05 pen, micron pen. A little bit fatter of a marker tip. I didn't really leave myself a lot of areas to sign. I'll do it down here on this road, right here. That's pretty much it. This is our finish. Let's bring the light in over here. I don't know if that helps or not. And you can see trees in the background. You can see what we did with the trees here and the highlighting of the trees. It's a nice scene. I will uh, show it up closer and better resolution at the end. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. Leave me some likes, subscribes, and all that good stuff so I know you're out there. And thanks for watching.